Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about alkylation of terminal alkynes. If you remember in the last video, we talked about how terminal alkynes are acidic, or at least relatively so for organic compounds. <clears throat> they can be deprotonated with appropriately strong bases like sodium hydride to form acetylide anions. And I've got an acetylide anion drawn right here. Just remember, this thing is an acetylide anion. Now, because of that negative charge there on that carbon atom, the satellite anions are also very good nucleophiles. So this kind of, this satellite anion can do a lot of the things that we're used to seeing nucleophiles do. Uh, and at this point, probably when you think of nucleophiles, you think of nucleophilic substitution. Uh, so that means if we were to take this acetylide anion and react it in such a way that with um, an alkyl halide electrophile, right? so this thing is an alkyl halide and it's an electrophile. <clears throat> we might expect uh, a nucleophilic substitution reaction to happen provided all of the other sorts of conditions that lend themselves to nucleophilic substitution reactions also are true. Uh, and we'll talk about some of those in a minute. <clears throat> so, and here we have our acetylide anion nucleophile, our alkyl halide electrophile. They react together uh, and I'm going to show you the mechanism here in a moment, but just as a general reminder, nucleophiles attack electrophiles. Uh, and this mechanism that I've drawn here, maybe you recognize it. Let me show you now uh, the mechanism of an example reaction where instead of having generic uh, hydrocarbon groups, I've got specific compounds. Uh, so here we're reacting phenylacetylene with sodium hydride as a base, uh, and then with bromoethane as an electrophile. First step of this mechanism, oh, what happened here? Oh, uh, formatted as chemistry. Uh, first step of this mechanism is a proton transfer reaction. So this is a reaction between the terminal alkyne and the sodium amide base. Uh, let's put this carbon label in here. You'll understand why in a minute. And I need a negative charge for my sodium, so it's NH2. And let's put some lone pairs. And sodium amide actually has two lone pairs, so if you only draw one, that's probably okay. arrow in here. All right. So the first step is proton transfer. If you remember proton transfer, we draw an arrow from the base towards the acidic hydrogen and then from the, the bond that that hydrogen is in towards the other atom. A proton transfer step is a two arrow step. Another important thing to remember when you're drawing mechanisms is that you want to use the reagents that you're given in the reaction in the order that they're shown. So we're shown uh, a reaction here where it's one sodium amide. So whatever is going to happen, sodium amide is going to do it first. Um, let's draw the acetylide anion. Let's see, I don't want the negative charge on the negative charge to look like that. Here's my lone pair on the carbon and our <clears throat> product. Uh, on the other side is what am I doing? I lost my ammonia there. Hold on a moment. Is ammonia. And this is the proton transfer or the deprotonation, the formation of the acetylide anion that we talked about in the last video. Now, step two is uh, nucleophilic substitution, as I mentioned previously. Uh, 
Oh, isn't that interesting? Okay, no bold. No underlined. No italics. Right. Nucleophilic substitution. <clears throat> and again, we're using the reagents in the order that they appear in the, the reaction. So we've used sodium amide, now we need to use bromoethane. Bromoethane is a primary substrate. We have a good nucleophile. Uh, I'm not telling you what the solvent is, because in this case it's not actually important. Uh, though, though there are some reasons to use one couple of particular solvents. Uh, we draw arrow from nucleophile to electrophile. At this point, the electrophile is actually the carbon atom and the carbon-bromine bond breaks, and the bromine is a leaving group. Mm. <clears throat> These phrases might sound familiar to you uh, because you've used them before to describe uh, other reactions, and in fact, this reaction is a familiar one. <clears throat> this nucleophilic substitution, where the nucleophilic attack and the loss of leaving group happen at the same time, is a familiar reaction. We've seen it before. This is the SN2 mechanism. And in fact, all alkylations of acetylene type anions happen by the SN2 mechanism. And because they all happen by the SN2 mechanism, uh, there are some limitations to this reaction that we need to talk about briefly. Uh, so I actually have two different limitations. The first one is due to it being uh, an SN2 type reaction. And the second one has to do with the type of alkyne that we use. So in our first case, we want to react uh, one butyne with sodium amide and then react it with two chloropropane. Uh, the trouble that's going to come in here is that 2-chloropropane is a secondary substrate. Uh, and if you remember, or uh, when you we were studying substitution and elimination reactions, secondary substrates are tricky because they can do both substitution and elimination. And now we need to think critically uh, about what's going on here. And so after step one, we have the following combination of stuff. We have our acetylide anion. Oops, don't, need, don't need all those wacky bonds. There we go. Acetylide anion, lone pair. Whoops. Lone pair anion. Okay. We have our uh, ammonia left over from our uh, deprotonation reaction. And we've just added two chloroethene or two chloro or two chloropropane. The the problem here with two chloropropane being secondary is that it can undergo both uh, an SN2 reaction and an E2 reaction. Uh, because while our you know, acetylene anion is, also, is a good nucleophile, it's also a strong base. And so we have to consider the possibility that E2 is going to compete with SN2. Uh, so the, the product of the SN2 reaction is... Uh, the one where the alkylation has happened. The product of the E2, or the products, excuse me, of the E2 reaction uh, involve the acetylene anion taking a hydrogen atom in this uh, proton transfer. Remember, an E2 reaction, E2 elimination involves proton transfer, electrons shifting to form the, the pi bond, and loss of leaving group all at the same time, and so we also get propene and chloride anion out. We're going to get chloride anion out in both cases. And then it turns out for secondary and 
tertiary substrates Here in tertiary substrates. E2 wins. So in the, this particular case, uh, we would get this group of products uh, form as our major product. And that's trouble because if we wanted to form the alkyne that would form through the substitution reaction, we might have to do things a little differently. Uh, and I'll do an example in a minute that talks about how we could make maybe make that alkyne and some others. Uh, the second limitation uh, that we have here is uh, non-terminal non alkynes or internal alkynes. You might look at this alkyne and, and trick yourself into thinking that it's a terminal alkyne, but this is actually not a terminal alkyne. I'm going to show the carbon label there. This is a methyl group and the alkyne is internal. It has no hydrogen atoms on it. So this alkyne is this combination of stuff actually leads to oops no reaction uh, because it's not a, because we you know we have not a terminal alkyne which means it's not acidic so this is another limitation of this reaction is that it can only be used on terminal alkynes so let's do an example Here's this uh, internal alkyne that we had shown on, on the last screen, uh, and I tried to make it one particular way, uh, but I tried to put the isopropyl group onto an existing alkyne. Uh, and, and the trick there is that elimination uh, competes and, and wins, actually, in most cases. So what if we really wanted to make this internal alkyne? Uh, we could make either of the carbon-carbon bonds coming off of the, the alkyne. Uh, and so we could do the, the combination that we did on the previous screen. Here it is, actually. Let's just, let's just copy that over. Okay, except we know that the outcome of this reaction is not substitution, but elimination. So what if we tried the other combination? If we had the isopropyl group already there, and instead of reacting it with 2-chloropropane, we reacted it with chloroethane. This is similar to the uh, example mechanism, different, uh, different molecule. Now, because we have a primary substrate uh, for primary, ooh, for primary, primary substrate SN2, SN2 is going to win. So the correct synthesis of that terminal alkyne up there, or that internal alkyne up there, is to react 3-methyl 1-butyne with sodium amide followed by chloroethane. The last thing I just want to briefly show you is that acetylene anions are good nucleophiles for other kinds of reactions with electrophiles. Uh, you're going to learn uh, in, a, in a few few videos down the line that uh, carbonyl compounds and epoxides, these three-membered ring ethers, are also really good electrophiles for a lot of kinds of reactions. And so once you have studied some reactions of those functional groups, it should not come as a big surprise to you that... Uh, acetylene anions can react with them as well. Um, and I'm not going to uh, draw out necessarily the mechanisms or anything about these reactions and wait uh, until we have talked about the 
uh, characteristic reactions of these functional groups. But just to note that generally, anytime you need a good nucleophile, uh, you can use the acetylide anion. In the next video, we're going to talk about another way to make alkynes, uh, starting with alkenes or, or with dihalides. Uh, thank you for watching.